Okay, now part two of our lecture on fertilization and childbirth is the part about childbirth. And what I want to start by doing is talking about the effects of pregnancy on the mom and then uh, go from there. So, let me start. So, uh, the mother has some physiological changes uh, in the stomach and um, intestines region, you probably know about morning sickness. Uh, morning sickness is very common due to elevated levels of, a, of progesterone, they think. So because your uterus is producing, uh, or sorry, your um, ovary is producing excess progesterone than you're used to, they think that's what causes morning sickness. Um, an interesting story about that, I have, I have sisters that have had morning sickness. I had one sister who was night sickness, my wife had some morning sickness, and we don't know why it's worse in some women than others. Um, in the 1950s, they developed a drug. Uh, that drug was called thalidomide, and it was hailed as a morning sickness cure, and it did. It cured women of morning sickness. Pregnant women did not get morning sickness. It was a huge hit, except uh, what they didn't know, because they kind of rushed this drug to... Um, the public, and this is one of the drugs that led to the development of the Food and Drug Administration and the rigorous testing we have now for drugs, is uh, thalidomide had the unfortunate occurrence of also causing birth defects, like missing limbs and missing fingers, missing hands, missing arms. We don't, they don't really know why, but that drug only lasted about five years and then they discovered it was causing birth defects they had to take it off the market. Uh, heartburn is common because of organ crowding by the fetus, and we'll come back to this in another slide in a minute. Uh, constipation, because, of course, your intestines can't squeeze very well because they're being squished by the baby, so they, uh, it moves a lot slower, which causes water to be taken out by your large intestine, which causes constipation. Some other effects of pregnancy on the mother... Uh, some other physiology, the urinary system, the kidneys have an additional burden. We'll come back to this in a minute, too. They have to produce urine for you and the baby. They're taking out the baby's waste and dumping it, too. So uh, there's more urine, and the other problem with that is the uterus is compressing the bladder. I'll go back to a, let's go back to our slides here uh, from way back in the beginning um, of this discussion of the female reproductive system. Whoopsies. Sorry about that. And you notice, if you look at the construction of the female reproductive system here, that the uterus here lies directly over the bladder, which is right here. And so as the baby grows inside of here, it squeezes all the organs up and down, squishes on top of the bladder, also constricts the, uh, the, the large intestine so it doesn't move as well, and just kind of takes up all this room in here. And so uh, all those things happen as the baby grows. And uh, so the next organ we need to talk about then is the, is the placenta. Uh, the placenta is uh, an organ that you have for about a little under nine months of your life, and then you discard it. When I say you have it, it's yours, okay? The placenta, the placenta was not the mother's, it's the embryo's placenta, and it forms a barrier between the mom and the embryo. This is a key. Blood is not exchanged between mom and baby, shouldn't be. Uh, every once in a while, a little bit leaks in or out, but generally not. So you see as the baby sits in here, you can't really tell here, this baby is sitting inside the abdomen upside down, and uh, the placenta is all the way around the baby. It forms a barrier. Blood is not exchanged. It delivers nutrients and oxygen. So mom has blood vessels in her uterus. Remember, the uterus kept growing the wall 
all those blood vessels that you shed when you have a menstruation uh, are existing here and they are dropping off oxygen and oxygen is diffusing across this to the baby. Also sugars, proteins, fats are diffusing across into the baby's blood. Uh, the other thing about the placenta is it becomes an endocrine organ. It produces the hormones that maintain pregnancy. It starts producing progesterone and estrogen uh, so that the, that the that pregnancy, what I, when I say, quote, pregnancy is maintained, it's uh, keeping the mom from getting rid of the baby. So the baby lives inside of this placenta and, it, and the umbilical cord grows in a few weeks after a few weeks after conception, the umbilical cord has started to grow. And the umbilical cord, you know where your scar is, right? Your navel, your belly button is your umbilical scar. And the umbilical cord is into the placenta. Notice that the baby's blood vessels and the mom's blood vessels don't meet. So that baby is dumping off its waste, absorbing oxygen and nutrients from the mom. And... Uh, soon after childbirth, you will have that umbilical cord removed. So this is just a slide on what happens. We're not going to get into the changes over time in embryology. I'll leave that for another course or another day. So what happens in childbirth? We kind of talked about this at the beginning of the year. Childbirth is an example of positive feedback. So after about 267 days, I know that's an oddly specific amount. That is the gestation period of a human female. At about 267 days or so, we don't really know uh, why it's different in some people than others. The baby has gotten to a size, and it is filling up the mom's abdomen. Her stomach and organs are all squished. Or you, you can see here the bladder is really compressed, the large intestine is compressed. So the baby gets to a size where its head really starts to push down on the cervix. And as the baby's head begins to push on the cervix, there are nerve impulses that go up to the hypothalamus in the brain. Those the hypothalamus in the brain produces a hormone called oxytocin. The hormone oxytocin targets two tissues. One is the breast to produce milk, and the other one is the uterus wall to contract. So the uterus will respond by contracting. When the uterus contracts, it squeezes. I'm doing all these hand motions. Can't realize you don't see me. The uterus squeezes and the baby's head gets pushed farther down. That makes more pressure on the cervix. More pressure on the cervix leads to more nerve impulses to the brain. More nerve impulses to the brain leads to more oxytocin. More oxytocin means more muscle contraction. And so as you, if you graph this, this is the level of oxytocin. Over time, it's doing this. And so is, if we do the same graph, for uh, contraction strength and speed, it's mirroring it. And so the contractions happen faster, 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 and harder and harder and harder. And what they're doing is those contractions, the uterus is slowly squeezing the baby out. If I go to the next slide, this is a picture of labor and delivery. The dilation of the cervix is what you know as labor. So what you have to do is you have to get the opening here. The opening of the cervix has to dilate to 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters, you can get out a ruler is not very big. 
So the cervix needs to dilate to 10, and you maybe have heard of this, a nurse, an OBGYN nurse will come in and she'll measure it. She'll measure that and say how wide it is. So the babe that dilates to 10, this takes the longest. This is labor. In some women, it's very short time. In some women, it's hours and hours and hours. Expulsion stage is actual delivery. Notice the baby is coming out head first and face down. The head of a baby is 33% of its overall size, so if the head comes out first, everything else should follow nicely. And it, once it gets to the stage where the cervix is dilated to 10 and the baby's head is poking out, the mom will feel like she has to push it out. And she will do the Valsalva maneuver, which is contract your abdomen, bend over, pull your legs up, <laughs> and push down. And that could take anywhere from a minute to a half hour to deliver the baby. And then the last stage of delivery is the delivery of the placenta. And contractions do not stop until the placenta is delivered. So you notice here that the umbilical cord has been cut, but the placenta is still in there. And that has to be removed because it's the baby's. Okay, The placenta is the baby's um, creation. And it's foreign to the mom, so it must be removed. Those are the stages of labor and delivery.